Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to talk to you about my reading plans for October 2022. October is always a really tricky month for me reading wise. I want to read a ton of spooky books, dark academia, things that fit the season, but I've been on booktube for enough years now to know that October is the month that normally gets away from me the fastest because this is the time of year when I am really busy getting ready for nonfiction November. This is my favorite time of year weather wise, so I'm normally out and about enjoying the autumn season. I'm going to a bunch of library book sales that happen this time of year. Then there's the fact that my wedding anniversary and my birthday both happen in October. So <laughs> there are always a ton of different things competing for my attention in October. I normally don't get as much reading done as I would like. Now that hasn't deterred me from making an October TBR because I would like to read as much as I normally do. So let me just show you the books that I'm hoping to get to, and I'll just say that I'm going to try my best. So let's start off with the fiction books that I am hoping to read during the month of October. I have a few classic books that I would really, really like to get to in the upcoming month, and this first one I have to show you really suits the season. It's The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Other Stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. I am obviously the most interested in the very famous title story about a doctor and and his increasingly dangerous alter ego. But I am hoping if I have time that I'll get the chance to at least sample some of the other stories in this collection. But another classic I would like to read in October is actually one I'm reading out of season because Green Mansions by William Henry Hudson is normally something I would read during the summer since it's set in a hotter climate. This lesser known classic actually takes place in the jungles of Venezuela. A man accused of plotting to overthrow throw the government, escapes into said jungle, and then falls in love with a woman he meets there. I've heard this one be called Weird, and when I was buying this used copy at my favorite used bookstore here in Pittsburgh, the employee who was working at the time, we got to talking and she told me that the movie adaptation of this book is extremely creepy. So I figured, what better book to read, what better movie adaptation to watch during the creepy month of the year than this one. But then a more classic classic on my TBR for October is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Apparently in this book, we get a day in the life of the characters in this novel, including Mrs. Dalloway, who was finishing up planning a party when we first meet her. I have only ever read A Room of One's Own. That's the only Virginia Woolf I've ever read. I obviously adored that book since I am currently sitting in this room, this room of my own, my reading room where I do a lot of my creative work, but I've never read any of her fiction. So I am really looking forward to this introduction. But then there's an upcoming fiction book that that I want to read that actually quite nicely bridges the gap between classic and contemporary. It's one of my most anticipated new releases coming out in this final quarter of the year. It's called Hester by Lori Lico Albanese. In this new novel, the author imagines that Nathaniel Hawthorne had a muse when he created Hester Prynne, the central character of The Scarlet Letter. And from what I hear about this book, we get to be transported back to the 19th century to see it all happen. This one has been getting great reviews so far. I cannot wait to read it. And it comes out right at the beginning of October. So I don't think I'm going to have any trouble getting my hands on a copy. Another newer release that I've been saving specifically for this month is Acts of Violet by Margarita Montemore. This is a book about a magician who disappears only for real, and her sister has to go out and figure out what happened to her. This one just sounded like fun for October. It seems like it'll be pretty fast paced, pretty easy to get through, and I need those types of books in October, considering how busy I'm going to be. But then there's one more fiction book I have to show you. And this one, I'll say I'm planning on giving this one a try more than anything else. It's The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. I found this used Book of the Month Club edition at a library book sale. I only paid $1 for it. And that's the only way I ever would have bought this book because I've just heard way too many negative reviews of this one. Apparently it's academia, but then I've heard some people say that it barely qualifies, so they don't consider it to be dark academia. There's something about it that intrigued me enough to pay one whole dollar for it. And I'm going to try it. I know some people have 
have enjoyed it. I'm curious to see if I'm going to be one of those people. But if it's bad, I'm just going to DNF it. I'll unhaul it and clear off some shelf space. So we'll see how this goes. I am much more confident about the nonfiction books that I've picked for myself for October. During the spooky season, I like to read science books, particularly science books that focus on things that are sinister or creepy. So I'll be reading a handful of those in October, including The Science of Murder by Carla Valentine. This is a book that breaks down the forensics that can be found in Agatha Christie novels, books that were written before forensic science was even an established field. I can't remember if I've ever mentioned this here on my channel, but there was a time in my young life middle school into early high school that I wanted to be a forensic anthropologist when I grew up. I am still really interested in the science, even if that's not what I ultimately ended up doing with my life. So I am sure this is going to be fascinating, and maybe it will even inspire me to finally pick up an Agatha Christie novel. That's right, you heard me correctly. I have never read an Agatha Christie book in my life. But speaking of books I haven't read yet, as part of my ongoing, somewhat unofficial project, Project to read a bunch of popular nonfiction books that I haven't read yet, for no good reason, I might add, I am finally going to read The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. As you may know, this is a nonfiction book about how cancer cells were taken from a Black woman by the name of Henrietta Lacks without her knowledge, without her consent, and they've been used for medical testing ever since, even though she and her family were never compensated for it. I am convinced that I'm the last human on earth to read this book. And I feel that way because I mentioned this book in a video I did a while back. I was talking about books that I'm late to the party on. My mother saw that video and texted me telling me I need to read this book. So I think everyone has read this already. I need to finally read it. So I dedicate this one to you, mom. More science. I would like to read Breathless by David Quammen when it comes out this month. It's a book all about COVID. It's past, present, and it's likely future. Since this virus is very much still with us, it was very much with me back in July. I want to be as informed as possible. So this is a priority. But then the final nonfiction book I have to show you, the final book on my October TBR is another one I'm picking up to fit the season. It's called The Secret Lives of Bats by Merlin Tuttle. This book is part natural history of bats and part memoir of the author's time spent researching bats, advocating for them. As I just mentioned in my latest book haul, I find bats positively adorable, even if they're considered creepy by other people. I cannot wait to learn more about them. So those are the books that I am hoping to get to during the month of October. I know it's going to be a really busy month for me, so all I can say is... I'm going to do my best. I highly doubt I'm going to read all of these, but I'm going to try. If you've read any of these books, you want to share your thoughts, or if you now want to read them after you've seen me talk about them, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. In the description box below, you can see all of the books I've spoken about today linked for your clicking convenience. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see more links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, including Goodreads and Instagram, the two places where I'm the most active. If you would would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.